Good morning, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for bringing me to Korea to share with you what I researched for the past five years. And I've been in business for the past 20 over years, and I started doing research in this area back in 2012. And today I'm going to share some of these findings with you. Okay, let me give a general um, view of what I see uh, happened in the last 40 years. And if we go back to the 1980s, we were in the era of automation. And we say automation is driven by assembly engineer engineering, and the proposition is to have cheaper, better, and faster products and services. And what we see is components manufacturing assembly. Over there, we are trying to minis minimize the cost of production. And as time goes on to 1990s, from minimizing cost of production, we're moving to minimizing the cost of information with the bond of the internet, driven by high precision and internet engineering automation. And the, the proposition then was to have free, fast, and frictionless services and products that um, come to the market. And we have emails, data storage, data tracking, and high precision engineering. And when we come to year 2000s, we have the devices, the digital devices, especially the smartphones and other internet of things that we are developing, which is now. Um, the digital payments and transactions has become more efficient and a lot faster. We have the digital assets that we are trying to uh, digitize them as we go along. And then we have the AI algorithms, we have the machine learning. It's all driven by digitalization and globalization. And the proposition was that we have service-based businesses, operation tracking and feasibility, fractional sharing of assets, which you can divide the count so that you don't have to own the own whole count, but own a fraction of the count, and AI ratings, your own credit rating using AI, economies of scale, and economies of scope. But from 2015, we are moving from minimizing the cost of flow of transactions and services to minimizing the cost of trust. And this is the blockchain era. And this is the next frontier that we are looking at. And what we are seeing is basically driven by tokenization. It is more than digitalization, it is more than digitization, it is tokenization. And it has to do with decentralization. It has to do with tokens, it has to do with smart contracts without third party, without lawyers. It has to do with oracles that store the data outside the blockchain. It has to do with peer collaboration on our trust, untrusted parties. It is not just purely about production efficiency. It is about collaboration efficiency, and we can see that the proposition is provenance and authentication, data monetization, peer-to-peer -peer transaction, machine-to-machine -machine transaction without human, borderless, decentralization, secure privacy, which is very important, distribution of trust, autonomous convergence of technology, and convergence of industry that we may not even talk about a finance industry on its own, but a convergence of technology into one. So, um, you can see the direct impact of the current digitalization and globalization, but this is not what I'm going to talk about today. I can just briefly cover them. Basically, the immediate impact is that we have outdated models, especially in economics. A lot of economics models we cannot cover a lot of phenomena that's happening at this moment. And because of that, we have outdated measurements for our GDP, for our tax collection, for everything that we are trying to do, including foreign direct investment measurement, including GDP measurement, including transfer pricing. We have problem in measuring that because we have new business models. We have platform economies, we have sharing economies, we have gig economies and so on. The productivity continues to come down, and there are many new different fundraising activities and can go cross-border beyond IPO. We have old listing rules that are still um, 
requiring companies to have profits and turnover, and we are changing now fairly rapidly, but it affects job creation because we need to balance disruption with innovation, and we need to look at how to educate the young, which is what the university is trying to do because of all this outdated model and outdated measurements, it is very difficult to convince um, the general public to have new type of policies because there's a lot of resistance from the incumbents and there's a lot of resistance for people who still believe in the old model. And let's look at this, the whole new digitization for finance um, dominated by the Chinese players, which was mentioned by um, the previous speakers. And you look at these four companies, Alibaba, Tencent, Ping An, and Baidu, they have services across all, from payment to insurance, to personal loans, to SME loans, to credit rating, to money market, to wealth management, to crowdfunding, and to currency exchange. They are active in every business sector that we can talk about. And you can look at other tech companies in the world. And you can see that there are a lot of gaps for companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Apple and Facebook. They may have the best technology, but when it comes to commercialization, nobody beats China in those areas. And there are a lot of gaps in there. And sometimes, you know, you're beginning to doubt whether being prudent is not prudent. And being too careful is actually being careless because you miss a lot of opportunities. And those are the doubts that's now going through everyone, everyone's mind. How do we deal with this disruption? How, we deal, how do we deal with digitalization? And how do we deal with tokenization that is going to totally disrupt the entire economy, not just, fin not just the finance sector? Let's look, look at this diagram. And you can see that the core, we have Alibaba.com for the Alibaba group. That's B2B. And then you look at Taobao, which is an e-commerce platform. It has Alipay as a trust agency. As you move out in the layers, you can see that there's an expansion of services over time, from C2C to B2C, and into investment management and so on with N Financial, and into cloud, cloud business, Alibaba Cloud, going through every sector of businesses, and with artificial, artificial intelligence of Pi 2.0 into almost every sector of the economy. As they expand, based on the economies of scale, the huge number of customers that they have, they're actually expanding the economies of scope by having more services to the same group of new customers that they have generated. And you look at Ping An. Again, we have the same insurance, and you have life insurance, and so on, and then you go look at the next ring, you have Lufax, um, P2P lending, and now wealth management, Ping An Bank, and then you can look at um, clinics, health management, there's healthcare there, and then you can look at image recognition, voice print recognition, facial recognition, and now they have micro expression. By looking at your expression, I can tell whether you're angry, you're nervous, or whether you're lying, and I can look at your vein recognition, all the veins on your face, on your fingers, I can tell how you feel and what you are doing, and we can use that for rating. And this is the kind of new services that we are seeing. And the Chinese firms are implemented with speed, and they fail, but they continue to innovate with no fear. And a lot of companies cannot afford to do that because they have to answer to the stakeholders, which is usually the shareholders or the board of directors. And usually the board of directors are not in technology risk management. So it's difficult for the board to make decisions to have new replacement when you have one failure. And that is a major hindrance where the board composition becomes very important in many of the listed companies. And you can see that in the Chinese way of doing business is to go by the path of lease, of ease of compliance in order to have new technology, new products, new customer, new market. They do not serve old customers, they do not force the customers to leverage, and do, they do not make the financial products more complex. They look for new customer, new technology, new products, and new market. And cloud is the, cloud is the, is, is the base of AI strategy, 
and the cognitive services are the foundation of AI development, and they are just serving the SMEs, which are underserved. And they look for unbanked people, and there are millions of them all over the world. So this is the kind of strategy that they have been using, and you can see that in Alibaba, it has 41% of the cloud market inside um, uh, China, and Amazon is a global leader in, in the cloud space. So the global cloud market is continue to grow. So you can see the AI plus cloud is cloud computing. Cloud computing is to increase cumulatively about 19% um, from 2015 to 2020. And Alibaba has actually expanded into from, from China to India, Indonesia, Thailand, Bangladesh, Philippines, and Singapore. They have Adi Cloud in every sector from banking, insurance, payment, e-commerce, media, food, lifestyle, and logistics. So this is the kind of expansion of the economy of scope, just not on financial services, but everything else. Okay? This, there may be a convergence of technology and convergence of industry. So is there something more than just AI, data, and cloud? And this is the new book that I've just written with Paul Suti, and a lot of analysis is done by him. And if you look at blockchain patents, these are the companies that are filing for all the patents from Alibaba in 2017, there are 43 patents, and so on. These companies, financial companies, are focusing on blockchain and filing patents. So what are they trying to do? Okay. Well, it just happened that blockchain may just replace banks. We will still require banking services, but not banks in the current form, because blockchain, just like Tower Re Records, has been replaced by iTunes, and then we have steam engine replaced by electricity, or yellow pages replaced by Google, we may see that HTTP being replaced by blockchain, and blockchain itself can perform the same function at banks. And I think that is the key threat to the banking industry. And that's the reason why everybody is looking on patterns for blockchain. But are there anything beyond ABCD, as the previous speaker was talking about? A stands for AI, B stands for blockchain, C stands for cloud, and D stands for data technology. We've got to ask the question, do we just need those? Well, we need something else. We need the 5G. We need the intent-driven network. We need the AI chipset. Because at the foundation, at the bottom of AI, blockchain, cloud, and data, is all the computer chips. So if you are looking at financial innovation, you really have to go to the base and the fundamental layer, which is the 5G, which is the intent driven network, and the AI chipset. And the Huawei's R&D spending is 13.8 billion in 2017 and increasing. Okay. So Korea leads in 5G, so you are in a very good position. Okay. This is where the next wave of financial innovation will be. And you can see that um, we, we have quite a lot of interesting companies in Korea. And Korea is the first 5G company with infrastructure investment over 9 billion US. And there's a competition between Samsung and Huawei to bring infrastructure to South Korea. And this is actually a very interesting area for development for South Korea, not only in Korea itself, but globally. And I will show you what Samsung is doing uh, outside Korea as well. So Huawei has 28% ahead of Samsung 3% in telecom infrastructure um, um, market size. And there's high possibility for them to work with, um, work with uh, South Korean. But the interesting thing is Asian market is dominated by Asia telecom companies. And because 5G will be the next area of high growth, therefore, Korea is in a very good position for financial innovation from the very base of AI, blockchain, 
cloud and data technology. So besides 5G, we will talk about intent-driven network, which introduces big data and AI technologies into the all cloud networks that help in enterprises go digital. Okay. So now the chipset can do a lot of what the programming were doing. And you can put entire programming and embed the software into the hardware. And that will speed up a lot of 5G application. And that will speed up a lot of AI operation. But of course, then the AI chip will not be as flexible as the more general chips that we are thinking about. But Korea in, is in a very good position to look at the chip for the financial innovation. And Huawei and Pingan partnership has bring the intent-driven network to the finance industry because the network itself is driven by AI. And this is important for insurance services. So that in the case of Ping An, you have 6,000 roaming P damage. All you have to do is take a photo of the damage of the car. Okay? And if it's below 6,000 roaming P, the damages will be paid to you within six hours with no human intervention. And that is the kind of way to disrupt the insurance industry because claims and a, cert a certain of claimants is always very, very uh, time consuming and very costly. And machines and AI can take over very low claims with no human intervention. Okay. And if you look at the AI chipset, okay, the Huawei Kirin 970 is three times faster than the Apple chip. Now, this is the leading um, chip um, development that we are seeing at this moment. So besides the chips for um, handphones, we are looking at chips for autonomous vehicles, which also Huawei with High Silicon, the company High Silicon, are manufacturing a lot of these very precise and very specific AI chips. And every country is setting up labs to do all this AI chip. And if you're in financial innovation, you have to pay attention to the chip. So we are moving from software to hardware now. And we are moving from uh, hardware itself to the very base of the computing power, which is the chipset. So as a financial industry, this is something that we need to pay a lot more attention. So we have ABCD plus 5G plus intent-driven network plus chipset. There's a multi-dimension of the disruption. But human behavior is actually the key to the entire space because this is not technology that drives the innovation. It is human using the technology that drives the innovation. Now, the most impactful change that we have seen is actually mindset. Okay? Mindset change is actually led by regulators, not by business incumbents. In fact, the regulators are more innovative than a lot of incumbents which are doing very well. And if they are making a few billion dollars a year, there's no reason for them to change. They will only be disrupted. But the regulators are more in tune with innovation and the mindset change happens this time round at the regulators. And there's a redefinition of prudence in public policy and it's discarding the dismissive mindset and sandbox is being used rather than outright ban of any new financial innovation and financial inclusion has become the key because the entire financial um, development so far has been financial exclusion excluding a lot of people including the SME and the unbanked from the system so we are reversing the process and we are revising the role of government as a facilitator and government as a node rather as a center because most of this disruption is bottom-up social change, social innovation. Okay? And ac actually, this type of social innovation has been advocated by Nobel laureate, the late Alina Ostrom. And she was a Nobel Prize winner talking about the, tra the, tragedy, the, the, tra the tragedy of the common 
And from there, we look at collaboration efficiency, which is what this disruption is about. So the fourth industrial revolution is all about trust. Okay? It's all about trust because you are trying to reduce the cost of trust. Okay? Beyond cost of flow, beyond cost of information, beyond cost of production. How do we reduce the cost of trust? Where cost of trust is the real de disruptor? By tokenization. Because tokenization is an incentive for the untrusted party to work together. A lot of trusted agencies are protected by regulation. And because they're protected by regulation, they tend not to innovate when they have a lot of profits and they, when, when they can answer to the board of directors or the shareholders. Each time to try anything new, if they fail, the board of directors and shareholders will not be forgiving. And therefore, it's very difficult for them to pioneer innovation. But in terms of tokenization, it facilitates untrusted parties to work together. To collaborate. And there's a convergence of technology with Web 3.0 with AI, IoT, and blockchain because you need to use the token to incentivize, incentivize people who, do, who don't know each other to work together. Only by a good economic structure, good economic incentive that people don't, who don't know each other, who don't trust each other, will collaborate together. And token is the incentives for people to work together. And this is why most of the countries are now focusing on digital currency, especially in cryptocurrency, because they know that for government to cross border, for government not to be a center, but a node of the entire economic space, they need to have tokens to tokenize other corporates and other countries to collaborate with them. Okay? So, with token, you can secure privacy, you can accelerate transaction, you can reduce costs, and you can increase cost of hacking. It is important to prevent hacking. A centralized system is much easier to hack than a decentralized system like a blockchain. And every node that add on to the blockchain increases the cost of hacking. And that's the key to tokenization because privacy protection is a very, very valuable proposition. Okay? So this is where it is. We have the human, we have the physical world, we have the virtual world, and this is where the chipset have converged the entire physical and virtual world into the life of humans, and the chipset has linked AI, Internet of Things, and blockchain. And the future cannot be predicted, but making the right choice will increase the chance of a good outcome. Because once full convergence have reached, we have a super AI robots will be definitely more powerful than all physical and human intelligence combined. So this is why this revolution is about blockchain, it's about uh, tokenization, where it is about distributed technology, okay, it's decentralized, it is converged, it's, it will reach singularity with a decentralized autonomous organization. So here's blockchain, token, smart contract, and decentralized aut autonomous organization where there's no human interference, where we don't need company, we don't need board of directors, we may not even need management because everything will run on its own. There lies the danger of a super AI and we could have a possible bad outcomes and behavior because as we delegate all the human function to the AI chips, danger will start to, to surface and we could have a digital empire where it's a centralized data and wealth, okay, which is easy to hack. So anyone can take over the digitized, the digitized empire and we may have surveillance capitalism so that they will extract data from your handphone they will extract data from any of the IoT or the videos. They extract all the data about you without you knowing at all. And with that, so that's the saying. You think that you are using internet, but the internet is using you. You think that you are searching on Google, but Google is actually searching you. So you may not have any privacy, 
you may, have, may not have any security if the data falls into the wrong hands and you may not have any safety. And that is what is worrying. And therefore, we may have a so-called Skynet. You watch the movie and centralized AI is perfect for organized crime. So how do we deal with that? Who are the players? It's government, corporates, startups, and the cypherpunks who actually go out and protect the privacy of human. Okay? Now, when you talk about blockchain, the common question is that, is there or are there any use cases? There are a lot of use cases, and they're all driven by government, like trade lands, like Deliver. Deliver is a joint venture between Samsung, ABN, Emro, and the port of Rotterdam, and also Calista, which is, um, uh, which is part of the government linked company initiative by Singapore. So the governments are taking a lead in blockchain use cases in shipping, supply chain, trade, trade financing, and supply chain financing. Because in trade and supply chain, basically, they are very chaotic. The cost of trust is, in, is very, very high, and we need to minimize the cost of trust for untrusted party of unknown parties. So live use cases, inclusive fintech, I think earlier the chairman has spoken about livestock tokens. You can tokenize the livestock like cows. ATAC, you can tokenize the identity of the refugees like the United Nations. Smart Mesh, you can tokenize a decentralized network so that if the internet is down, we can communicate with each other peer-to-peer -peer devices and IoT. We may not need the internet. We can use satellite and our own devices to con communicate with each other. So these are the government that are doing financial digitalization with new public policy and strategy from Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, Malta, Gibraltar, Switzerland, and Estonia. Each of them have a different focus. And I don't have time to talk about them today, but basically, there's a lot of things about the market structure, about the regulation, uh, in the sense that the open data, that anyone who uses your data should inform you, rather than to sign a privacy-invasive user agreement. So it should be by regulation that anyone who uses your data has to inform you as the basis. That's open data policy and open, hard, open source hardware, open source software, trust agency, there will be a new form of licenses, coded governance, which is blockchain, executable governance, which is smart contract, and privacy protection. We can focus on AI ethics and cybersecurity. We can focus on technology risk management. So in the near future, the supply chain and trade, which will be disrupted communication network, especially geopolitics of chips and raw materials. And you can see that governments are very focused on technology risk management. And it is a must for all listed companies and financial institutions to have a very strong technology risk management committee. That is the future. Because if your board of directors do not understand how to do technology risk management, the company cannot progress on the front of innovation. So Singapore Initiative for AI Governance um, is, is the first. Um, it's the first and it, it got the prize because it's the first. But the main thing is that ethics become very important in this age. Okay? And it has to be human-centric while spurring innovation. It's just not purely about innovation. So ethics is key to this. So every country is talking about ethics governance and no one wants to miss out and these are the core principles of AI which I have no time to talk about but I'll share the slides on the internet so that you can download all these slides and my conclusion is that whatever it is okay, we will make mistakes and we shouldn't be afraid about making mistakes we should try to prevent hacking okay, and the develop, development of a digital empire we should prevent the concentration of wealth and power which basically will lead to instability and distributed growth may be the only way forward and I see inclusive fintech as the likely most promising growth area and I see Asia, a lot of people are excluded from the financial system, especially in ASEAN. So my final word is that it is important to know that technology is here to complete the ecosystem. The new era is not to compete with each other. The new era is to collaborate with each other. 
The new era is not to become a digital empire to rule the world. The new era is to use technology to serve mankind. And therefore, whether you are a corporate, whether you are a policymaker, whether you are a user, we have to focus on human. Whatever we do, the net benefit has to be the good of the mankind. Thank you very much.